right, we are back talking college football on the Our Lads Football Network and specifically ACC football and the North Carolina Tar Heels. And for the first time on the show, we are going to introduce Ross Martin. He is the beat writer for the North Carolina Tar Heels at Inside Carolina at 247 Sports. Ross, uh, thanks for uh, taking your time to talk to us today. Appreciate you having me on. Looking forward to talking some Tar Heels ahead of the season. Yeah, the game, of course, starts in what? A uh, little bit more than 24 hours. This is a fr- We're recording on Thursday. This is a Friday night game, correct? Mm-hmm. Friday at six in Blacksburg. Yeah. So, and uh, how's how's that rivalry been lately? Uh, every game's been close. Um, it's been a high scoring affair the last two seasons when Mac Brown's been back. I think UNC is kind of uh, beating them on the recruiting um, field for sure. Been taking players out of Virginia, and and Virginia Tech hasn't really got as many players at North Carolina. So recruiting wise, UNC has kind of taken over the rivalry. But on, on the field. They split the last two games, and both games have been very close, including including that six-overtime game <laughs> in 2019. And so the teams don't like each other. They compete for some of the same recruits still, uh, and they're definitely coastal rivals. I mean, outside of, like, NC State, maybe Miami, I would consider Virginia Tech one of um, UNC's biggest rivals. They're so I mean, it's you know, three hours away as well, so a lot of overlap in recruiting and definitely competing for coastal titles. Yeah, and it's a big matchup considering it's it's the first game of the season and it's a conference matchup and a division matchup and there's a lot at stake here yeah it's a huge game i mean like you said i mean if unc loses this game it kind of halts the the heisman campaign for sam Howe, puts unc behind the eight ball for the acc coastal division um i mean it's it's a it's a big it would be a big loss i think there's a lot of pressure on unc to win it is a huge game. It can kind of jumpstart a season, but can also kind of derail a season uh, pretty early. So a lot of pressure on both teams. I think there's a lot more pressure on UNC, given the expectations, given uh, the top 10 ranking. Um, it would be a huge win for Virginia Tech to, to beat you know this high-powered Sam Howell offense. Uh, and I think Justin Fuente definitely needs the win. But uh, I'm interested to see what happens. I think UNC comes in as favorites, but a lot of pressure to kind of get that win and kind of get going on the season. Yeah, especially since it's on the road. Uh, but taking a look at the schedule in general, uh, the, the toughest games for North Carolina this season appear to be on the road uh, because Notre Dame is on October 30th. Of course, the NC State game is always tough. That rivalry game ends the season uh, at NC State. Uh, and that's the case, isn't it? Is that uh, the, the schedule, even though it's not monstrous, uh, they're they're going to be tested on the road. Yeah, the Notre Dame game definitely sticks out. I think Pitt on the road on a Thursday night, uh, kind of near the end of the season, is a tough matchup. Uh, Miami home, uh, it's good that UNC has that game at home. And like you said, uh, NC State, I think they'll be pretty good as well, have them on the road as well. But all eyes are on. This Virginia Tech game, and then, of course, I think Miami and Notre Dame stick out with Notre Dame in particular being right in the middle of the season and should be maybe a potentially a top 15, top 10 matchup. So uh, fans are certainly excited about the Miami-Notre Dame game back-to-back with a bye week in between. Okay, let's uh, get in, in, in into this uh, team, this 2021 team. So let's talk about Sam Howell, right. and he looks like he has the potential to be the number one draft pick when he comes out, if all things continue to go well. What does he need to continue to work on? So in the offseason, he's worked a lot on mobility, um, getting rid of the ball faster. I think avoiding sacks has been key for him, making sharper and more distinct uh, decision-making things. You know, He has the arm talent. I mean, he's proven he can make all the throws. Um, I think the offensive line will give him a little more time this year. At times, he was rushed, and that could lead to some errant throws, a couple of interceptions. But he, he's pretty good with the interceptions, honestly. Um, mobility has always been a thing that I think every quarterback works on. He's a pretty mobile quarterback. I want to consider him a dual threat. Um, so it's, it's kind of just taking what he's done in year one and year two, building on that. And they really go over a lot of NFL defenses. They go through every kind of scheme or thing they could see. Um, so t- taking his game from a mental level to the next step and then avoiding sacks, making better decisions, and just becoming healthier and more mobile and more fluid. Um, and I think this year for him, working with a different batch of receivers is going to be big. Kind of had a safety belt with Dami Brown and Daz Newsom the last two seasons. Those two guys are in the NFL. So working with guys like Emory Simmons, uh, Josh Downs, Antonio Green, 
uh, sorry, Antoine Green. Um, all those will be kind of interesting to see how he adapts to a new receiver group. And then you won't have the, the cushion of two great running backs. But there is some decent talent back, and you named some of them, including Corrales, right? I mean, this kid was off to a really good start last year until the injury. Does he Is he a capability of being the number one receiver? Corrales is out. He's oh, he's not. He's not. Playing. Okay. Um, he's not. Not playing against Virginia Tech. That news broke on uh, Monday. So, and we don't think he. And there's a good chance he won't play for a couple games right. at least. So we're not sure on that. But it's uh, there's no update in terms of when he's gonna be back. So it, it's not it's not Kraus. I think Josh Downs is gonna be the number one guy, uh, sophomore uh, slot receiver out of Georgia. He had a big game in the Orange Bowl against Texas A and M. So Josh Downs, uh, he should step in right where Daz Newsom left off. All right, and then uh, taking a look at the offensive line, how is that looking right now compared to uh, the last couple of years, especially last year? Any better? Any worse? Question mark? Yeah, should be better. I mean, they return all five starters. They return every player on the, on the offensive line. They didn't lose anyone of note. Um, so you have all five starters. You have kind of that sixth man, seventh man back as well. Big thing for UNC has been um, – Improving depth, so trying to get you know a redshirt sophomore, redshirt freshman, I mean a junior ready to play to be that sixth, seventh, and eighth man. Uh, they want to get to kind of that depth part where you have nine or ten, nine or ten guys that can go. So they return everyone, which is great, and you would expect um, you would expect a little bit of improvement, a little bit more chemistry, a little more experience. But they have tons of starts back on the offensive line, um, which which did really well last year and paved the way for. Two uh, thousand yard plus rushers protected Sam and led an offense uh, that was you know, one of the top offenses in the nation. So you would only you would think that they would be better. I mean, that's the thought. Now, is it some elite offensive line? And they have a couple of guys that could be in the NFL. Um, but, you know, I think it's going to be a top uh, offensive line in the ACC. All right. Now, you mentioned the two running back star guys that are in the NFL uh, is Ty Chandler, the Tennessee chance transfer. Is he the number one running back? Yeah, he's the guy that's going to get the most snaps early, um, for sure. Uh, the Tennessee transfer arrived in January. He's kind of immersed himself very well. They love him. Uh, can catch the ball at the backfield. Very um, versatile in what he can do between the tackles and outside uh, and in the backfield. So they like him. Behind him, you have a freshman in Caleb Hood, a converted quarterback. Um, DJ Jones, who is a sophomore now, um, coming off from injuries. So you have a bunch of guys behind Chandler, but they're gonna, I think they're going to lean on him early and see how far they can take him because he's the guy with the, with the most experience by far. But I, I don't expect you to see to, to have the same kind of rushing sure. attack they had last year with, with Williams and Carter. <laughs> That's be tough to replicate. Yeah. So, so that's kind of where this offense is: is finding um, finding that production somehow, whether that's you know maybe a little bit less in the in the run game, more in the passing game, or or kind of a plug-and-play situation at running back where they can do enough to, to, to move the ball with Chandler and Hood and Jones. Yeah, yeah those, that combo of running backs you don't really get too often. Uh, that, that, yeah. was, that was maybe yeah, – I've, I've been saying I've been saying it's you know, once in a 15, 20-year yes. kind of generation yep. in terms of running back. I mean, they're both top, top three, four-round picks and incredible college running backs. Uh, and, and that's why it's important for the defense to be better this year as well. Uh, and of course, you know, lost a couple of players, but leading tackler, uh, returns Gamel, is that correct? And there's also, you know, there seems to be talent on the defense, including in the secondary. Yeah, I'm super excited about the defense. Um, we can go through it, but a lot of people back, they turn, they return 11 of 11 from the orange bowl. Wow. They do lose Chad Surratt, who sat, Chad Surratt sat out the orange bowl. So 10 of 11 for the season, 11 of 11 from the Orange Bowl, uh, losing only Chad Surratt. Eugene Asante steps in next to Gimmel. So to break it down, I think the, the depth on the defensive line is going to be much improved. Um, you know, last year, they kind of only rolled out two or three guys on the, on the, on the kind of the three down, two down front they used with Rainbow Hasek and Tamari Fox. Um, they're adding in Miles Murphy, who's going to be a sophomore with some new names, you know, Kevin Hester. Um, Christian Varner, Tamari Fox, Ray Vahasic. They have a bunch of names that can roll out on the defensive line, which have, should have much improved depth. I think that's the most important thing that's going to make UNC different this season is the improved uh, defensive line depth. They're good at linebacker with Jeremiah Gimmel. They love him. He's the leader, the vocal leader of this defense. Uh, Eugene Asante, as I mentioned. And then, yeah, you mentioned the defensive backs. Um, Storm Duck, Tony Grimes, a former five-star cornerback. Uh, Kyler Michael, the Clemson transfer. They're all going to rotate in a corner. And then I like Jacorius Conley, 
uh, played nickelback last season. He's a safety this year, 6'2", 225, downhill, hard-hitting safety. They love him there. So he should have a big season as a sophomore uh, taking over that position. So there's a lot to like about the defense. I think if UNT can be better this year, it'll be, be because the defense is a lot better. Because I don't expect the offense to be you know, that much better. Um, you know, it's hard to improve yeah. on what they did last year on yeah. offense. So it's going to have to take a big jump from the defense yes. uh, to kind of limit the opponent's scoring. And, and I think well, I think with Sam Howe, you're going to be yes. in every game. And that's kind of reassuring. Yeah. And that's what happens in college. Sometimes, you know, it's all about recruiting. And you can go from being more of an offensive program to a little bit more uh, balanced, depending on, you know, hey, you know what? I think we've got to do a little bit more uh, cognizant recruiting on one side of the ball to kind of even things out. And hopefully that's where North Carolina is going because that's how you're going to win not only ACC championships, but compete for a national championship down the road. Keyshawn Silver, the five-star freshman. Uh, I, I hear he also wants to play basketball. Is that going to happen? And uh, what kind of contribution can he make on this year's team? I don't know if he's going to play too much this year. He wasn't listening to too deep. I, I think I think he will be a guy, but he's young and, and you know he has to get in the strength conditioning program. He was a big time recruit, but I think on the offensive line, defensive line, it takes you at least a year to kind of get settled. I do like Javari Ritzy, who came in with Keyshawn Silver, a little bit lower ranked, but I think he's going to be a better player. Super athletic, um, edge, uh, kind of like a the outside of that three four. So he's an edge. Um, defensive end Javari Ritzy, freak athlete really impressive he's a guy that's kind of been hyped up in the spring and in the offseason um heading into preseason camp um so I think he will be an impact player and you know Keyshawn Silver may play some this may be kind of the fourth fifth sixth game when 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 Keyshawn can get his feet wet but Javari Ritzy, he may be getting getting um you know some early snaps as a true freshman defensive lineman in game one they love him so that's the name I would I'd point to. Um, now, Keyshawn Silver may end up being just as good. It may take him a, a little bit longer to get um, to get in there. Cause it, and it's hard for a true freshman to come in and play on the defensive sure. line, I think. All right. Uh, the last couple of minutes I have with you, let's uh, talk a little bit more about that Virginia Tech matchup. Again, it's Friday night coming up. Uh, where do you think they're at right now? And, and what do you think the matchup, you know, based on what you saw last year and what you know about this year's Virginia Tech team is going to be the key? Yeah, so I think with Virginia Tech, I think COVID really affected them last year on defense. Um, I mean, even their defensive coordinator, I think, missed some time with COVID. I mean, one game they rolled out, like, some walk-on defensive backs. So I think they will be improved on defense, especially in the secondary. Um, they did lose that really good running back, I think, Khalil yes. Herbert, and some offensive linemen. So maybe a step back on the uh, run game. Um, and I think there's a little bit of a talent differential now between UNC and Virginia Tech. Um, but I think, you know, it's a well-coached team that's going to play hard. And especially with this, I mean, I think the crowd and playing in a packed stadium again at Lane Stadium is going to be a huge impact. And remember, none of these teams played last year in front of packed stadiums. So the freshmen who were freshmen last year, sophomores this year, aren't used to that. The rookies aren't certainly used to that. So that's going to be an impact. And I think it gives a little bit of advantage to Virginia Tech. I think the key for UNC is, is just – Take the crowd out of it early. Um, go up early. Sam Howe, a couple touchdowns in the first quarter, first half. Uh, you know, get get a get a lead, a double digit lead, and kind of put them away. I think that would be positive because I think if you keep Virginia Tech around, the momentum, the 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 hope from the fan base really take over. But yeah, you know, I think UNC has the experience at quarterback, and that's gonna be a big difference maker for them this uh, in this game. Um, I don't see anything about Virginia Tech that's super scary. They do have some playmakers at wide receiver, Trey Turner. Uh, I think his quarterback's a little bit of experience, but I mean, I, I, I'm picking the heels. I think it's, uh, like I said, the loss would be would be devastating, yes. but I think there's an opportunity for UNC to kind of get up early um, and, and win this game by double digits. Yeah, because the schedule after the Virginia Tech game is actually pretty decent, considering the, the, the next big road game isn't until that Notre Dame game on October 30th. Uh, you do have the back-to-back -back home games with Florida State and Miami, but uh, that's why it's important to get off to a really good start and a win, and that could really do wonders for the team. It's about ACC championship game or bust this year, right? So, you say AC, ACC championship game yes. or bust? Yeah, yeah, I think that's the goal. Get there, get to Charlotte, and play Clemson. I mean, that was the goal last year, I think, too. Um, and then I think they got to get to the level where they're competing with Clemson. Um, so beat Miami, beat Virginia Tech, uh, be the top team in the Coastal. Don't get tripped up by Pittsburgh or, or 
Florida State or Duke. Yeah. Um, and I think he has a good chance to get there. They have the talent. I think when you have a quarterback like Sam Howell, uh, you can do a lot of things that are special. And like I said, the defense, I think, is going to make some noise and be pretty impressive this season. There's a lot, a lot of names we didn't mention on the defense. I think are going to have big seasons. And, and, you know, too, is that it's just incredible watching them play over the last year or so how many games that were so close. I, I just, I mean, that just must just the, – the, the heart palpitations that the <laughs> fans must have in watching their games – even though it seems that most of them come out on top. So that's the good point. It's exciting. It's great. But still, you lose a lot of those, too. It's just uh, it's it's got to be hard on the fans. Yeah, it's been a pretty wild last uh, two seasons with all the close <laughs> games. Uh, and luckily, I mean, UNC's come out on top of some of them. But last year, they lost to Florida State late, lost to Virginia late, two games they should have won. So I think those games will... I think be used as inspiration this season to motivate them to not overlook any teams. They got top five ranking and lost to Florida State and, and dropped like 20 points in the AP poll. So um, I think Mac Brown will turn to those kind of um, those games as letdowns as inspiration this season. So hopefully no no big letdowns for the Tar Heels in 2021. All right, Ross, uh, what are you doing right now to prepare for the game as far as your articles, things of that nature? Uh, just what? Send everybody over to 247sports.com. Uh, InsideCarolina.com. Uh, go to the UNC site. So, yeah, InsideCarolina.com. We have a lot of stuff coming out, previews, game previews. Uh, recently, an article on the top 15 players that UNC has based on some analysis from one of our X and O's guys. We've got podcasts all over. The Friday game kind of moved up our whole podcast schedule. But um, we've got uh, – Tons of podcasts running, tons of uh, tons of articles going up, and then we'll have uh, comprehensive game coverage. Do you have a w- uh, before and after? Okay, the game. and you have like a weekly show yourself? Yeah, I do our recruiting show on uh, it's every other Wednesday or so, and then I host our post game show, uh, a live post game show after the game on Inside Carolina's YouTube page, uh, Facebook page, and Instagram. Awesome. Page. And what is that? How often? I mean, how quickly after the game ends? That. Uh, five minutes after the game, uh, instant reaction with former UNC running back Sean Drone, a new thing we're doing this year, um, a sponsorship by Blue Shark Vodka. We're running immediately after on YouTube and, and Facebook and Instagram, so you can get in your comments and stuff. So we have, a, we have a pregame show on the radio and then a postgame show on our streaming channel. Awesome. That's great. Ross, I appreciate it. I know you got to run. Hopefully we'll get an opportunity to talk to you again uh, once the season gets underway. All right, good stuff. I appreciate it, Greg.